Welcome to lecture four in our module five. In module five, we're looking at advanced confidence intervals. And in this particular lesson, we're looking at finding the difference in two proportions and representing that with a confidence interval. And we will use our infamous five-step plan. Now, this is brought to you by Dr. Dog, hanging around Texas A&M University Commerce, just having a blast. Now, we will start out, and in this, in, in to begin with, we have two proportions. We have a proportion one and a proportion two, and in these proportions, we have all sorts of values. We have the probability of success and of failure in the first proportion. Remember that this is P, and that Q is equal to one minus P. And then, of course, we have the number in that proportion, over here in proportion two, we have the probability of success and a failure and a number there. Now, in these proportions, as with sample means and other things that we've done, we generally don't know about the population. So what we do is we take a sample. In proportion sample one, we have p hat one, q hat one, and n one. Probability of success in sample one, failure in sample one, and the number in sample one. And remember, p hat one uh, if it's 70%, Q hat 1 is 1 minus P hat 1, seven, 1 minus 70 or 30%. And the same holds true for our second proportion sample, uh, P hat 2, Q hat 2, and N2. Now, here's a picture of what this might look like. We have our first proportion, and we have the probability of success in it the second proportion and the probability of success in it. And we have a number in our first sample and a number in our second sample. Now, if we have a P hat one, we likewise have a Q hat one. And if we have a P hat two, we likewise have a Q hat two. So we have P hat one, Q hat one, N one, P hat two, Q hat two, and N two. Having these two individual proportion samples, now we're interested in what is the difference from uh, between p hat 2 from down to p hat 1. And this area is covered in blue. That's what we'll be looking for. Now let this scare the devil out of you. My goodness. Look at this awful formula. p hat 2 minus p hat 1 minus z times the square root of p hat 1 times q hat 1 over n1 plus p hat 2, q hat 2 over n2, comma. So that's the first half of the interval, and this is the second half of the interval. Well, look at this in a little different light, and then we'll figure out how to do it. p hat 2 minus p hat 1 is the difference in the two means, minus and then plus. z is your confidence level, and that would be a t if you have a small sample. And then this thing right here, this terrible monster, square root of p hat 1 times q hat 1 over n1 plus p hat 2 q hat 2 over n2 is what we might call our weighted standard deviation. So what we've got to do with this is figure out how to work this hellacious formula. It should be something of enjoyment to you. Now, in order to do this, we need a five-step plan. First thing you do is identify all required information. Required information will be p hat 1, q hat 1, n1, p hat 2, q hat 2, n2. We would determine our z or t score, and we're ready to roll. Then you find p hat 2 minus p hat 1. That's the difference. Find z for your confidence level, and that would be t if you have a small sample. Solve for the weighted standard deviation. Plug those things into the interval and solve. It really doesn't sound too hard, does it? Well, it's actually not. Now, yes, these problems are requiring tenth solution. However, take them one step at a time. Follow the five-step plan and all will be well. Now, I just planted a couple of flowers here to just let you know that life is good. It's going to be okay. You're going to work through these problems and be highly successful. Follow the five-step plan. <laughs>